Welcome back to Ashton Gate. It feels so good saying that with fans here. Another opportunity, and he's onside, and it's two for Bristol City at this time. And it's in! An early goal for Bristol City, and Andy Vyman is back. And it goes clear ahead of Bristol City, and they are level. It's a first goal for Andy King for his boyhood club. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Robins TV as Bristol City look to extend their unbeaten run here at Ashton Gate to five this afternoon. Well, it was nice to be on the right end of a last gasp goal last weekend at the MKM Stadium as the Robins snatched a draw right at the end to take a valuable point on the road. Well, today's opponents, Huddersfield, they haven't won in four, so the perfect opportunity perhaps for three points this afternoon just ahead of Christmas. Well, I'm pleased to say that joining us here this afternoon, we have uh, professional development phase coach uh, Ali Hines. Great to have you back. Uh, you had a stellar debut last time you were on. It was the start of our mini resurgence. <laughs> yeah. no, it's great to be back. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good result against Barnsley. So we're hoping again today we can get an another good result to continue the form. Yeah, well, there's no rest for the week because it is your first day back, isn't it? Coming back out of isolation, all fit and well? That's right, all ready to go, thank you. So, yeah, busy day, but um, looking forward to the game. I know you've had a busy day. You've been up at the Robins HPC all morning, haven't you, with yeah. the under-16s and 18s? A busy morning for them and a lot of... I mean, now that's gone back into lockdown as well, hasn't it, from a red zone sure. perspective? Yeah, it has. We had a busy day, so we've had uh, the 18s, 16s playing this morning, the 23s group training as well. Um, obviously, the training ground's going through some changes at the moment regarding COVID stuff, but um, yeah, we can still we can still work and, and still make sure we can do everything we can for the first team and help out as much as we can. Yeah, aren't we all? Aren't we all? All of the changes. I know the fans are having to play ball and help us as well this afternoon as they arrive, hoping everyone's got in early. Everyone now having to prove this COVID certification. There we can see the players are stepping down off the bus. Nigel Pearson there arriving and uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's quite hard for the players, isn't it? It's hard for everyone at the moment adjusting to all of these new rules. It's tough, but I think the players have, have done it for so long now and it's kind of like the norm, strangely. Um, and, you know, as long as we all say, stay well and safe, it's, it's just a huge importance for us to uh, continue. Yeah, and uh, we're obviously seeing all of them there. and Ben Arusa we'll be talking about in just a moment. Of course, uh, Hanno Masenga as well is going to be featuring in our chat a bit later as we've got some uh, signed goodies to give away. Could make the perfect Christmas present uh, for someone if they enter our Robins Foundation drawer and the players just making their way down through the tunnel. Matty James there just coming. His, his presence very clearly felt yeah. last weekend. Massive, massive. It's great to have him back. Um, he's worked really hard, being out injured obviously for a while, but... Having him back is, around the place is fantastic and obviously chipped in with a, a good goal on uh, Saturday. Yes, perfectly timed, some would Great say. Timing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, just going into this busy, busy fixture period, I mean, it is a strange time with obviously mm -hmm. a number of games across the Championship being being uh, changed around or postponed, but um, the league really is wide open, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it is incredible between sort of, well, Huddersfield, we've got the chance to go uh, level with them. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, no, it is, it is a tight league, it's very competitive. Um, hopefully we can keep the run going today and, and continue to move on up the table. Yeah, indeed, let's hope we do continue that move up the table. Well, of course, it is the last fixture before the big day of Christmas itself. So let's find out what Nigel Pearson has named, uh, who Nigel Pearson has named in his starting 11. And let's cross to our lead commentator this afternoon, Toby Osborne. Yes, thank you very much, Lisa. Let's start with the visiting side today. Carlos Corboran makes one change to the side that was left heartbroken last weekend following that late Coventry equaliser. We know how that feels. In comes Luxembourg international Sinani, the first player from his nation to score in the championship. He comes in to replace Karoma, an attacking switch to join top scorer Danny Ward and US international Dwayne Holmes up front. In midfield for the Terriers, they have the dangerous Sorba Thomas who until this season was playing for Boreham Woods he has nine assists so, so so far a quite incredible return for a player that's made such a big step in defense former Sheffield Wednesday man Tom Lees lines up with Colwell an 18 year old Chelsea Loney who continues to impress in West Yorkshire but Huddersfield as well they can turn to prolific championship goal scorer Jordan Rhodes from the bench who returned to the club in the summer should they require him 
As for Nigel Pearson, well, he makes one change to his side following the draw to Hull City. It might surprise some, but Benarus comes in for O'Dowder. Not so much that it's Benarus for the injured O'Dowder, but a more pragmatic change would have seen maybe the inclusion of Cam Pring, who is on the bench today. Be interesting to see how the side shapes up, though. Huddersfield play more of a 3-4-3, so could we see City adopt that today with a flat midfield four? Matty James keeps his spot in the middle alongside Masengo, despite hobbling a little towards towards the latter stages against Hull. Semenyo starts again following his first goal of the season. Nigel Pearson sticking by the young forward. And great news from the bench as well for the home side. Tommy Conway returning and appearing for the first time this season. Some attacking options with him and Wales available from the bench. Right, now let's hear from the man that picked today's teams. It's Nigel Pearson with Robins TV. Nigel, your side are back at Ashton Gate today. One change to the side. Eamon Benarus comes in for Callum O'Dowda. He's proven he can play at this level. You must be excited to see him back on the pitch today. Yeah, he's um, he's always there or thereabouts. I think uh, yeah, we've got um, we've got a bit of youth in there, but I've got no worries about that at all. Callum Callum will be back next week, um, but it's a great opportunity for him. Four games I've beaten at home at the moment. Yeah. Um, you've talked about your side taking the game to Huddersfield and that starts with intent from the off. Very much so and I mean it will be a tough game today. I mean Huddersfield has had some uh, really early success um, but look we're only three points apart. I think, I think that illustrates how tight the league is. Um, I want to see our players be enjoy the experience of playing at home and I think that's one of the things that we've had against us for such a long time is that there's been with the run that we had over such a, a long period of time uh, I think that weighed a bit heavily on some of the players but uh, no we we know it'd be a tough game but I want us to go out and really try and enjoy uh, the opportunity to play at home and looking at the opponents today Huddersfield like yeah. you said not too far away in the table in reality three points yeah. what do you, what sort of challenge do you feel they're going to pose to you this afternoon well, they, they're a side who, who can play some decent football. Um, they've got a threat, uh, wide right. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a team who can uh, can keep possession, so we've got to make sure that we put them under pressure ourselves. But look, as you know what I'm like, what I always say is I, I want us to be, I want us to try and uh, be aggressive in how we play with the ball and without it. Good luck today. Go well. Cheers. And we have the latest thoughts uh, from Nigel there. Of course, as he referenced, one change for City with Ben Aroos coming in for Callum. And Nigel saying there that he'll uh, hopefully be back next week. Yeah, hopefully. Um, Callum's done really well. Um, he's performed really well. So hopefully um, he's not too long on the sidelines with that one. Well, we referenced as well uh, Tommy Conway returning to the bench. Great to have him back, at least on the bench. And first time in the matchday squad, I think, this season. Isn't yeah, it? great to see Tommy back. He's a, he's, a, he's a fantastic player, really good goal scorer. Um, and he's going to be a great addition back in the squad and hopefully he goes out far and again. Sport is so often about momentum and everyone always talks about it. You know, it has been a good performance over the last few games mm -hmm. from City. I think all of the fans have you know, felt the disappointment so far this season. But 10 points from the last possible 12, unbeaten at home in four. It does feel like there is some momentum going into this and going into this really busy festive period. Yeah, definitely. Momentum's huge and you know, you could, you could win a lot of games at the start of the season and still end up getting relegated. So it's about building that momentum throughout the season and and there's patches where over Christmas you can pick up a lot of points and, and really move on at the table. We've, we've talked about Benarus obviously before, youngster coming in, I, I, Toby referenced there about a slight surprise, it would have been perhaps a more practical change to bring Campering in, but Benarus, is, he's gone with him again, he's such a young, exciting player, yeah. isn't he, just 18? I think that's what the manager was referencing as well, he wants players to go out there and be brave on the ball, in and out of possession, um, and Eamon can do that, and I think the players these days, if they're good enough, they can play in a lot of positions, you know, very versatile, so it's... Uh, it's great for Eamon again um, and hopefully he goes on to uh, have a great game. Mm. Well, we talked about Tommy Conway there, of course, about players coming back. Matty James, of course, coming back last week. I mean, mm. that, that sort of impetus does make such a big difference, doesn't it? And for him to obviously score as well was, was even better. Definitely, <laughs> definitely for Matty. I think with his um, professionalism and as an experienced player, um, the way he works with the younger players is massive as well. So it's great to have him back and hopefully he can continue his form. Yeah.
Let's hope he uh, can continue that form. Well, let's uh, let's cross now down to uh, Downsy, who is pitch side, because we are talking pledge ball and just how you can make a difference to your environment through football. We are here. Hello, welcome Pitchside. We are here with project manager of Ashton Gate Stadium, none other than Pete Smith. Pete, hello and welcome. Now, this is this was your baby originally, wasn't it? Hey, it was, yeah. Uh, many uh, years sweating and crying and uh, a few smiles along the way as well, making this country. If there's a man that knows every nook and cranny of Ashton Gate, it's our Pete. Um, now, we're here to talk about something slightly different today, and that is pledge ball. We've heard the term, but perhaps you can tell us what it's all about. Of course, it's... It's a little bit of fun, but with a serious message. It asks football fans to go onto the website and make an environmentally friendly lifestyle choice. It then tells you exactly how much carbon that will save, and it also puts it all together as a fan base, so we can compare us against other opposition, such as Huddersfield Town, as an example. OK, so they're, they're also in it today, but there's some good news, isn't there? Because how, how are we doing in that league? Uh, this week, we went top of the table in the entire country, and actually, credit to Huddersfield, they are fourth in the country so they're hot on our heels making today's pledge ball game even more important uh, but collectively so far city fans have saved over 300,000 kilograms of carbon through those pledges it's absolutely awesome that, that achievement isn't it what can people do to get on board with this and, and, and help out yeah so they need to go to pledgeball.org or if they've got the uh, online match day program today they can also click on the qr code there and go straight to the fixture list click that you're a bristol city fan and then you make your pledges, sign up, and it's really, really simple. It didn't take two minutes. And what are the sort of pledges that people are making? Um, a really wide variety, actually. So I've made a few pledges this, this week. I'm going vegan two days a week, um, which so far has been relatively easy, I should say. And then you can make everything from massive, massive lifestyle changes about, you know, never driving your car to work, for example. I say massive, quite eminently possible. Um, I, but no pledges too small, as I say great stuff and, and Pete as far as projects are concerned here at Ashton Gate there's some more projects on the boil you're a busy man aren't you yeah th there's a number and a wide variety of projects going on at the minute um, I'm, I don't have to worry too much about the on-pitch stuff these days and I just you know worry about the the collective good that we can do for the community and the development next door the sporting quarter obviously planning permission has been submitted for that so uh, yeah very busy behind the scenes good man just remind us one more time if you want to get involved in pledge ball where do we go pledgeball.org. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Pete Smith, Project Manager, Ashley Gate Stadium. What a guy. Uh, we're going to hand back upstairs now to the studio with Lisa. Thanks very much, Danzi. Yeah, Pete Smith, busy at so many things, sporting quarter as well, and 300,000 kilograms of carbon. That is an amazing achievement. So keep getting the pledge balls, uh, keep getting them onto their website and pledging uh, your donation. It really does make a massive difference. Right, we are going to take a short break. We're going to take a look at how Ashton Gates car park was transformed in the middle of the week by some crusty demons. <laughs> There was some awesome stuff there, wasn't it? I mean, I'm not a petrol head, but it was incredible watching uh, what they put on display. Looks really good. Looks awesome. Yeah, it certainly does. I think a few people are looking at the website thinking, yes, I might just... None of us want to book anything, sort of, you know, looking too far ahead. But June the 4th, outside here at Ashton Gate for the Krusty Demons performance, it will be a phenomenal show, having watched that uh, earlier in the week. Right, you will notice that there are... Oh, the lovely pair of boots here on our uh, table. Uh, Christmas raffle is what we're talking about. The Robbins Foundation Christmas raffle. There is still time if you're like me and still haven't actually uh, managed to get around to finishing your Christmas shopping. Uh, you could bag some wonderful prizes to give away and be the uh, super parent by donating them to your children. Just all you have to do is uh, take part in the Robbins Foundation Christmas raffle. It's just two pounds a draw. Just head to either the city website or the Robbins Foundation direct website and enter it. 
the draw will be taking place on Monday the 20th. And these boots, if you want to hold them up there, Hanna, they are signed by Hanna Masengo. We've got some uh, goalkeeping uh, gloves, Max O'Leary's gloves. There we go, yeah. And a shirt as well. Who's that one signed? I think that's uh, Hanna Masengo as well, isn't it? Let's have a look. Beautifully. Oh, it's signed, it's, it's it's signed by signed everyone. The whole yeah. team. So some fantastic prizes that you can uh, bag yourself just ahead of uh, Christmas, which would be... Uh, in fact, I might be buying a few more of those as well, just to fill out the Christmas stocking. So just head to the Robbins Foundation website to enter that Christmas raffle now. Right, let's uh, get back into the action, talking to the players, but continuing the uh, Christmas theme. He might not be in the side today, but we caught up with Callum O'Dowder just a little bit earlier in the speak in the uh, week to talk about some Christmas ideas. Callum, Christmas is on the way and with it brings all of our favourite Christmas films. Only difference this year is that the City Squad are being recast as some of those characters. You're going to help us, you're going to tell us who is going to be playing a starring role on the big screen. So first up we're going to try and remake Elf. Who in the City Squad gets a little overexcited, no inhibitions and uh, wouldn't mind wearing some yellow tights? Uh, do you know what, this is an easy one. Uh, Chris Martin. Really? Chris Martin. I'm going to elaborate on it only because <laughs> he seems to know every film about Will Ferrell. Really? And uh, he'd have a random outburst of, say, Step Brothers or Elf, and he knows them all. Um, so I don't want to go into too much detail what he says, um, but it would definitely be Chrissy Martin. He'd be a pretty good buddy the Elf. 100%. Okay. 100% Chris, Chris Martin. Chris Martin. Uh, next up, Home Alone. Who, who operates just fine on their own and a bit of a prankster as well? Ooh, could be Joe Williams, actually. Really? Yeah, Joe Williams. He's, uh, obviously, you can tell by his accent where he's from. <laughs> um, so I know he's down here on his own. And that would summarise him, yeah. Good answer. Yeah. yeah, he is literally home alone at the moment, yeah. isn't he? Uh, can you think of who some good wet bandits might be as well at that? I'm trying to think. Um, a good pairing. A good pairing. Possibly J and T, maybe. Mm. Them two are quite close, I know that <laughs> for sure. Um, I like the wet bandits, the height difference there as well. Oh, no, no, you said that. I'm not, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I didn't that. say that. <laughs> Sorry, Jay. Sorry. Uh, right, we're looking for a Grinch. A Grinch? Yeah, whose heart is two sizes too small. A Grinch, oh, that's hard because I don't want to insult anyone. No, well, they don't really do fun and games, that's all we're saying here. Um, I don't know actually, <laughs> but if I had to choose one player to be the Grinch, um, I don't know, I'd probably say Andy. Andy Vyman. Andy Vyman, yeah. I'm going to say Andy Vyman. That's fair, but the Grinch Even though he loves Christmas, though, so that could be a bit of yeah, a... Yeah, the Grinch turns good in the end. So yeah, exactly. exactly. Sorry, Andy. Uh, Tom Hanks famously played all the parts in Polar Express. So yes. who in the squad can just do about everything? I'd oh. say Rob. Rob Atkinson. Rob Atkinson. I think he I think he played that, that role yeah. really well. A calm, cool, collective nice. kind of guy. So I'm going to say Rob. Rob Atkinson, star of Polar Express. Uh, crucial question, is Die Hard a Christmas film? No. It's not a Christmas. Okay, well, we're going to ask you anyway. We need Straight a up, no hesitation. No. <laughs> we need a Bruce Willis. So who is the hard man in this team? <laughs> um, I'm going to say Callas. Thomas Callas, of but, course. Uh, but underneath all that, he's a very soft guy. I'm going to say that. yippee ki Yeah. Love Actually next, uh, replacing Hugh Grant as the Prime Minister, is we need somebody who, uh, who loves a good dance, even if no one's watching. Good dance. Tariq loves a good dance really? in the dress room, yeah. <laughs> he tends to put his music on, whether it be Casey or putting a bit of the music on, but T will always be dancing. Nice. Always be dancing. Would he make a good Prime Minister? I don't, I'm not sure. Not sure about Possibly. that. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Uh, and finally, who is the Scrooge in this team? Is there someone who doesn't like sharing? Um, who doesn't like sharing? Oh, Scrooge. They might not like me for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being careful. Dan Bentley. Dan I'm going to say Dan Bentley. Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah. When it comes to Christmas, Callum, are you more Ebenezer Scrooge or are you more Buddy the Elf? Oh, no, I'm Buddy the Elf. Excellent. Yeah, yeah I, love, I love Christmas. Me and 
me and my girlfriend or fiance now Isabel um, mm. we we go we go for it really uh, even yesterday we were looking at um, reindeers just to put on the dry and then I actually thought for a second oh, why are we actually doing it but it's because we just love Christmas <laughs> loves loves Christmas yeah we got no kids as well so it's not as if we're doing it for ourselves really Purely doing it for themselves. Once the kids come along, though, it is all about the uh, expectation, isn't it? That was so funny watching him. Matt, who was your favourite at that It was that great. Lineup? Probably Joe Williams, because that's his usual gear anyway, to be honest with you. So <laughs> I've, seen him wear, I've seen him wear that jumper a few times around the training ground. So uh, <laughs> it was very good by Cal. Uh, I liked Cal. As I watched Die Hard the other night, you know, the original Christmas movie for us and yeah. our family. Uh, um, Cal as uh, Bruce Willis was... Uh, an interesting one to watch. I think it was a bit unfair calling Dan Bentley Scrooge. I, I think that's grossly misplaced. Uh, I wouldn't like a comment on that one. <laughs> oh, you're taking the fifth on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, well, uh, I will let you uh, get ready and uh, to make your way up to our commentary position with Toby. Uh, so thanks very much. And Thank you'll you. be back joining us here in the studio at uh, half time. Right, time for a bit of reflection, though, as Bristol City, of course, enjoyed the spoils against the Terriers in recent times. That's including uh, getting over them last season. But we thought we'd look back to 2017 and a 4 0 thumping. It was nice to see a 4-0 winner, isn't it? Let's hope it's going to be the same this afternoon. Well, uh, this is the time of the day that we get to say goodbye to those of you that are watching our pre-match show over on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. But, of course, those of you viewing us from overseas, you can still grab your match day pass. Just £10. Head to robinstv.bcfc.co.uk and you can buy your £10 match day pass to be able to enjoy all of this afternoon's action. So